In this lesson, I am going to discuss quadratic function. A quadratic function is a function of this form, ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are real numbers and a should not be equal to 0. Of course, we want a to be not equal to 0 because if a is equal to 0, then we are just left with bx plus c. And this one would be a linear function. Note that the graph of a quadratic function is a parabola. Here are the characteristics of a parabola. The opening of the parabola will depend on the sign of your a. If a is positive, then your parabola will open upwards, whereas if a is negative, then your parabola will open downwards. Here are some characteristics of parabola. The vertex is either your highest or your lowest point. In this case, since we have a parabola opening upwards, this is our lowest point. The axis of symmetry is just the vertical line drawn through the vertex. So this one is our axis of symmetry. So it's called axis of symmetry because you can reflect the parabola along this axis and you will get the same graph. So we say that this point is the mirror image of this point. So when you fold it along the axis of symmetry, you get this point from this point. And of course, our x-intercepts are the points on the x-axis where the graph intersects it, and the y-intercept is the point on the y-axis where the graph intersects it. Now let us talk about the domain and range of quadratic functions. Recall that we have two cases when A is positive and when a is negative. Let us assume that hk is our vertex. Now, in both cases, what is the domain of a quadratic function? The domain is the set of all real numbers. Correct? Because when you project this, and this one will extend indefinitely, so what will happen is that you will get the entire x-axis. However, for the range, we will project it along the y-axis to get the y-coordinates. Of course, this one also. When you continue this, what part of the y-axis will be covered? You will cover everything from k upwards. This one will also extend indefinitely. So that is why the range here is all y such that y is greater than or equal to k. The only difference if your graph is going downwards is that what will be your y coordinates if you project it along the y axis. You will cover from k and then you go downwards. This one will also go down. So therefore, our range is y less than or equal to k. So again, to summarize what I've just said, the range of the graph depends on your vertex and on the sign of your a. If a is positive, your range is y such that y is greater than or equal to the y coordinate of your vertex because it's opening upwards. But if it's opening downwards, then your range will be less than or equal to the y coordinate of your vertex. Here are some characteristics of a parabola. Given f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, this is known as the general form of your quadratic function. The vertex of the graph is given by this formula. The x-coordinate is negative b over 2a. And what is the meaning of this notation, f of negative b over 2a? This means that once you have your x-coordinate, you simply have to substitute negative b over 2a to the value of x to get the y-coordinate. And the axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. Suppose that this is our parabola and this is our vertex. 
this is the point negative b over 2a, f of negative b over 2a. The axis of symmetry is the vertical line passing through the vertex. And what is the equation of a vertical line? That is x equals negative b over 2a because the x coordinate is always equal to negative b over 2a. How do we graph quadratic functions? The first thing that you have to do is to identify and plot the vertex. And then you get at least two points from the graph. Make sure that these two points are different from the vertex. These two points are either your x-intercepts, you have two of them. You can also have your y-intercept and its mirror image. So for example, we want to graph f of x equals x squared plus 2x minus 8. Let us determine its vertex, intercepts, domain, and range. Let me first compute for my vertex. It's negative b over 2a. In our quadratic function, our a is 1, b is 2, and c is negative 8. Hence, negative b over 2a is negative 2 over 2 times 1. So that's negative 1. And therefore, we compute f of negative 1 to get the y-coordinate. So it's negative 1 squared. I am substituting negative 1 for x here, plus 2 times negative 1 minus 8. So that's 1 minus 2 minus 8. This is equal to negative 9. So therefore, our vertex is the point negative 1 negative 9. Next, let us compute for our intercepts. For the x-intercept, you set y to be equal to 0, so you have 0 equals x squared plus 2x minus 8. And we factor this as x plus 4 x minus 2. So therefore, x is equal to negative 4 or x is equal to 2. So hence, as points, we have negative 4, 0, and 2, 0. For the y-intercept, set x to 0. And what will you get? You get that y is equal to negative 8. So our point is 0, negative 8. For our domain, of course, it's the set of all real numbers, whereas for the range, even if we haven't graphed it, notice that our graph is opening upwards because E is positive. Let me just draw that. And this is the point negative 1, negative 9. So what is our range? Y such that going up, Y is greater than or equal to negative 9. Let us now graph our function. We've identified our vertex to be negative 1, negative 9. Negative 1 is halfway between 0 and negative 1. And then negative 9 as well. There you go. So this is our point. And your x-intercepts are negative 4, 0, and 2, 0. We now connect this. Then this one here will extend. That will be your graph. And notice that here I already know that it will really intersect negative 8. So that is my graph. So this is the nicer version. So you have this point, negative 1, negative 9. And your y-intercept is 0, negative 8. Here are my x-intercepts, negative 4, 0, and 2, 0. Next, we have f of x equals negative x squared plus x plus 2. Let us compute for its vertex. For the x coordinate, you have negative b over 2a. So that's negative 1 over 2 times negative 1. That is equal to 1 half. And the y coordinate is f of 1 half. That's negative of 1 half squared plus 1 half 
this is equal to negative 1 fourth. You square first and multiply by negative 1 plus 1 half plus 2. This can be simplified as 9 over 4. So therefore, our vertex is 1 half 9 fourths. For our x-intercepts, you set y to be equal to 0. So you have 0 equals negative x squared plus x plus 2. Let me multiply both sides by negative 1 so that the coefficient of x squared is 1. This can be factored as x minus 2, x plus 1. So therefore, x equals 2 or x equals negative 1. For our y-intercept, when x is equal to 0, your y is equal to 2. Your domain is always a set of real numbers. And for the range, your graph is opening upwards or downwards. It's opening downwards because A is negative 1. And the y-coordinate of your vertex is 9 fourths. So that means going down. So your range is y less than or equal to 9 fourths. Here are the values that we have computed earlier. For the vertex, we have 1 half 9 fourths. So halfway, this is 1 half. 9 fourths is 2 and 1 fourth. So approximately here. So we get this one. And their x-intercepts are 2, 0 and negative 1, 0. Just so that it will be accurate, your y-intercept is 0, 2. Hence, the graph is this one. Then connect this. one. Here is the graph if it's drawn using the computer. We can also talk about the vertex form of a quadratic function. The vertex form is written in this form. a times quantity x minus h squared plus k where h k is the vertex. The nice thing about the vertex form of a quadratic function is that you no longer have to compute for the vertex. You can easily get the vertex if you look at this form. So, for example, if I have 2x minus 1 squared plus 3, my vertex is 1, 3, correct? This is my h and this is my k. What about if I have negative 3, x plus 1 squared minus 2? What would be your vertex? Take note that x plus 1 is x minus negative 1. So your h is negative 1. So your vertex is negative 1, negative 2. So here is an example of a function which is already written in its vertex form. So since it is in vertex form, the vertex is now equal to 2, 1. No need to compute negative b over 2a. What about its intercepts? For the x-intercept, you set y to 0, so we get 0 equals x minus 2 squared plus 1. And we can now use the square root property, correct? So we have negative 1 equals x minus 2 squared. But the square of a number cannot be equal to a negative number. So therefore, we say that we have no x-intercept. What about the y-intercept? You set x to 0, and if that is the case, what is y? y is 0 minus 2 squared plus 1. That is equal to 4 plus 1, which is equal to 5. So our y-intercept is 0, 5. So here are what we have obtained earlier. Our vertex is 2, 1. You have no x-intercept. Your y-intercept is 0, 5. Notice here that since we do not have an x-intercept, we will use the y-intercept and its mirror image to get our parabola. 
So first, let us look at the axis of symmetry. So it's the line x equals 2, correct? So if you look at this one, you just reflect it along this line. This is 2 units away from the axis, so we get this point. This is 2 units, this is 2 units. So therefore, we can now get our graph. There you go. That is the graph of y equals x minus 2 squared plus 1. Our domain is the set of real numbers. And the range is all y such that y is greater than or equal to 1. And here is the graph of the function drawn from the computer.